Hi everybody, welcome back. It's me, Teresa Perrin. I want to discuss Hellbiz and the technical breakout that it's about to undergo. Guys, congratulations if you watched my video over the weekend and got into this play early. What an amazing move it had today and it's just getting started. So without further ado, let's get started and please remember to smash that like button. I'd greatly appreciate it and consider subscribing. I do try to put out a daily watch list most mornings um, before market open. I apologize about not having one today, guys. I completely overslept and actually missed market open and um, it's really not normal for me. So I apologize. But anyways, let's get started with Hellbiz. The first thing that I want to note, guys, is the fact that this float is only 23.02 million, which is extremely small, especially given its current price of 31 cents. Well, it's up an additional 12% in the after hours, so it's approximately 35 cents at time of recording. Um, this is a very, very small float for a stock of this size. And the volume today, guys, once again was very low. If volume starts to come into this, things are gonna get pretty crazy pretty quickly in my opinion. The average volume has been 11.73 million shares, which guys is half of its entire free float is traded every single day, which that alone should tell you something. The volume today was 7.25 million shares and the 52 week low in this stock is 23.9 cents and 52 week high is 12.10 cents. So guys, um, you know, essentially 24 cents was its bottom. So if you didn't get in at that price, it is still very, very low and has a long way up to go. And just so you're aware, it's all time high is over $40. So this is essentially trading at a very, very discounted price. And I don't believe that it really is an accurate evaluation of where it should be trading at. I think that it's just been really heavily beat up and being a startup company and you know that being risk on is not something people want to do in this market. I think it's just been really beat down. Add to it the fact that it came out as a SPAC, which have all been beat down very hard as well. And it's just been a disastrous um, rotation for Hellbiz. And I don't believe guys that it is going to stay at this price. Um, anyways, the only analyst that rated it has given it a buy with a $13 price target. Now, can you imagine buying it essentially three shares for a dollar? You would like literally 39 times your um, cost basis if this went up to $13 this year. Absolutely crazy, guys. There's not a whole lot of opportunities in the market for this, but this is where generational wealth is built, and this is how. This is an opportunity, in my opinion, of a lifetime, provided this stock, you know, moves as I believe it's going to. Guys, um, I don't think there's very high risk at this point with the price being so cheap, but for each their own, and please remember this is not financial advice, please do your own DD, and I think you'll come to the conclusions that I have regarding this company. Now, there is a mix of three bullish and three bearish signals in the past month. So short term, this is still given um, a downward um, rating, but I believe that that's going to change, guys. We did get this nice little doji that I talked about in my video yesterday, Today, we started that breakout and we are going to continue, in my opinion, tomorrow based on the technical analysis that we will go over in this video. Now, medium term, it is showing a move to the upside, which I firmly agree with. And I think that you'll see the short term um, reverse to the upside as well over the next day or two. It's not always accurate the way that this presents because it has to get another indicator that's bullish, I believe, in order for um, Weeble's AI to move it. So don't fully trust in that, but I do believe that we see an upside and we'll discuss why in just a few minutes. All right, guys, so real quickly, I'm going to go into the chart in more detail in a minute, but just briefly, um, today we are up 12.58% and we're up an additional 12.69% in the after hours. 
So, you know, that sounds like a lot, guys, but remember, this stock is very, very cheap, so it doesn't take much to move its size. Now, interestingly enough, dark pool trades today accounted for 56% of the total volume. And over the past 20 days, it's been an average of 38%. So dark pool trades were up, but here's something else that is of interest. Large block trades in Hellbiz, which usually represent institutional trading, accounted for 43% of the total volume today, guys. And it's only been 26% in the past 20 days. So I believe that institutions are seeing what I'm going to discuss with you that I'm seeing and loading the boat today. Um, also, sweep orders represented 13% of the stock's total volume today, which is an indication that a market participant is aggressively taking liquidity in a certain direction for Hellbiz. So guys, I do believe they were sweeping um, any shares that were available to buy. And there was a time when you could see this, if I go back for a minute, when the price had moved up, they pulled it back. And I believe that they did a stop loss hunt searching for liquidity there um, because they wanted those shares. So guys, um, something to definitely keep your eye on because the short interest in this is only 1.27%. And the only institutions that own it are long. And if you go back and you watch my video from the weekend, I discuss more about that. So if you haven't seen it, I suggest you do. Um, Hellbiz currently has 1,500,000 shares available to borrow. I think you'd have to be an absolute crazy person to be borrowing it um, at these prices to short. That's just my opinion, but um, to each their own. The cost to borrow is insane for this price, 45.41% cost to borrow, guys. Um, and like I said, you know, um, the short volume ratio in the dark pool, guys, was even higher, 67.12%, which is almost its two-week high. It's been between 34.55 and 68.20. So somebody is still desperately trying to hold this stock down for whichever reason, guys. And I don't believe that it's institutions because according to the filings, they're long. So who's doing this? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Now, again, uh, failure to delivers are insignificant, guys. This hasn't been an issue. As you can see from the last date, they've all been covered. Um, will this progress as the price goes up? I don't know. I really think that you'd have to be foolish, like I said, to be shorting it at this price. But let me show you what. All right, guys, with the technicals, I'm going to start with the daily chart. So this is the daily one-year chart. Now, it's very hard to see, but my green SMA is my 13, and my blue is my 20. And the 13 is about to cross over the 20 SMA, which I believe is going to happen tomorrow, which is why you saw me call out on Twitter that we are about to have a technical breakout in Hellbiz. And guys, my confirmation on this is the fact that we got the doji print yesterday. We had a move to the upside today and that move triggered the 13 to get very close to the 20. And I believe that that cross happens tomorrow and we continue making moves. And when the smaller Mo moving averages cross above the larger moving averages, it's a very bullish indicator. And especially in a stock like Hellbiz, um, that is so cheap with a small float, guys, it has the potential to really make a big move. Now, if any catalyst should come tomorrow, um, PR drop, maybe an announcement for the earnings date, anything of the such, um, it is going to trigger this stock to make a very nice move, in my honest opinion. If you look at the MACD at the bottom of the screen, um, we have the red crossing above the green, which is a bullish in indicator. Now, what I'd like to ultimately see on the daily chart is for the lines to cross above our blue waves, right? Um, and that will be very bullish, but that's going to happen as the price begins to move up. And I also like to see the RSI above 50. Right now it's at 42 on the daily chart. Um, but again, that should be moving up as well when we get to other time frames. Now I'm going to look at um, some shorter time frames to help with this technical analysis, guys. Let's look at what it's doing on the 60 minute chart. Now, 60 minutes, beautiful. We have the RSI above 50, and we see that the 
red has crossed above the green on the MACD and we are looking for this to move to the upside again and cross above because once we get some bigger moves to the upside guys I'd like to see it hold above this wave indicating an uptrend right um, but we have gotten started and I do believe that like I said we see this continuation tomorrow and on the 60 minute chart you can see that oops I lost my fidelity. Hang on, guys. I have to reboot, so give me a minute. All right, guys, I apologize, but my computer kicked me out of fidelity um, because fidelity does something every night, and it's sometime after market close. Every day seems to be a different time where this happens. So anyways, um, back to the 60-minute time frame where I was just finishing up. It is bullish um, in every indicator here. And I apologize for the new lines that are here. I'm not quite sure what caused that. I had to reload everything because I had it all set up and didn't have an opportunity to save that um, before it closed me out. So my apologies. Now looking at the 30 minute time frame, we are seeing the same thing, guys. We are seeing um, very bullish moves to the upside and um, the 13 is holding above all of the smaller moving averages, right, that we have on the screen, which would be the 20 um, and the 48. And guys, our RSI here is above 70, so this is fabulous. And you're seeing that the red has crossed above the green. And look at, we are above the wave on this time frame, which is Excellent. Very, very bullish because we want to eventually get above that wave on all of our time frames, which as the price continues to move up, we should be seeing. Now looking at the 15 minute time frame, guys, you can see once again, we're above the wave. And guys, it looks like the um, 13 is above the 48 and above the 20 on this time frame as well. The MACD is at 60, I'm sorry, the RSI is at 67, which is bullish. Um, and the MACD does look like it wants to either at least touch the green, potentially cross, dip back under uh, for a slight pullback at market open, um, or then followed by a move to the upside would be my expectation on that. Perhaps it needs to cool down just slightly. It is possible or tomorrow morning, who knows, uh, anything could happen. We could rip at open. I don't really know, but these smaller time frames, again, you're going to see waves like you do in the five minute. There's multiple crosses in the MACD. As you can see, very bullish. It's holding above. Um, and on the smaller time frame, it actually looks like um, the red crossed under and is getting ready um, to potentially curl back to the upside and cross above the green again, which we want to see. The MACD has cooled off. It's back to that 50 range, and we want to see that continue to be moving upwards, guys. And again, the smalling moving averages are above the higher ones. Now, it is very common throughout the day to have multiple crosses up and down in the um, you know, in this ticker because they are very close at this time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did get a slight pullback because we are above where we closed um, so that it's potential it could pull back a few cents before it moves back to the upside, guys. But overall, this is very bullish and I am seeing indicators that um, Hellbiz should be breaking out and I believe tomorrow we will see that when we get that cross on the daily time frame for that 13 crossing above the 48. Real briefly, while we're here, let's see if I still have this set up. Um, here's another thing that I'm looking at, guys, on my four hour time frame. I would like to see this 13 cross back above the 48 moving average, and that would be another bullish indicator for a longer time frame, being that that's the four hours. And it's been crossed below for a very long time, at least the last month, if we go to the past year. Uh, it may not give me that, let's see. Actually, guys, um, it's 8 p.m. exactly. Fidelity is probably going to kick me out again, so I'm going to end it here. But anyways, this is why I am very 